Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Spinosaurus. Is the CEO of Bite Force so deadly that the universe had to send an asteroid to take it out? Versus a part-time theropod sushi chef that took on 30-foot super crocodiles and with actual usable arms. Two of the most iconic carnivorous dinosaurs blessed with size and a full-time job at haunting the nightmares of their prey. This is a rivalry that started with the Jurassic Park franchise, yet got so heated that it basically became equivalent to a tiger versus lion argument. And today, we'll break down who would win in a fight between a T-Rex and a Spinosaurus until only one is left standing. Now disclaimer, I've actually made a video on this before, but after diving into further research and letting paleontologists make their discoveries, my answers have actually changed quite a bit. And after thinking it over, let me tell you, this ain't gonna end like Jurassic Park 3. But real quick, we're on a road to 100k, and it would really mean a lot to me if y'all subscribed, liked this video, and commented what y'all think. There's actually a clear winner in this matchup to the point where I think it kind of starts to become pretty much unfair. Now just so we're clear, this is all based on what we currently know in 2025. But now let's establish some ground rules for this fight. We're gonna assume this is between an angry, fully grown T-Rex and an angry, fully grown Spinosaurus who want to duke it out. So no running away or anything like that. And where shall this battle take place? Well, let's say it happens on a riverbank. Okay, sounds good. Now let's find out who wins this fight. Size and Physique the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's not just a dinosaur, it's an icon. The name alone causes nostalgic flashbacks of museum skeletons, movie scenes, and nightmares from childhood. But strip away the Hollywood spotlight, and what you're left with is something even more terrifying. A real-life apex predator designed for destruction. It was a biological war machine built for battle. It didn't just rule late Cretaceous North America, it defined it. And let's squash a myth right now. Unlike what movies have you believe, the T-Rex did not have bad vision. In fact, it had forward, front-facing, binocular eyesight, meaning it could see directly in front of itself just like us humans. And modern estimates say its eyesight was as good as a hawk's. But alright, we get it. The Rex was an absolute nightmare. But what was on the menu? While well, the T-Rex was specialized at taking down armored, huge beasts like Triceratops, massive hadrosaurs like Edamontosaurus, and even tangled with the Ankylosaurus if it was feeling extra bold. And to bring down those monsters, pure finesse was not gonna cut it. It adapted a power power-based and robust build to keep up with its armored foes. You see, while most theropods were built lean and fast, the T-Rex was a walking tank. And by the way, it was the most robust theropod and a lot of muscle. It had very thick bones, a very wide rib cage, and an insanely robust neck that supported a massive five-foot-long skull that weighed in at 600 pounds. The T-Rex had a skull the size of a grizzly bear, and all of that was supported by its powerful long legs and wide hips. So the T-Rex was essentially like the strongmen of the dinosaurs. But just how large was the Tyrannosaurus? Well, the average T-Rex stood about 12 feet tall, measured at 40 feet in length, and weighed between 6 to 8.5 tons. Now, some of the biggest and most famous Rexes that were fully grown, like Sewer Scotty, weighed in between 9 to 10 tons. And then there's Goliath, a potential heavyweight champ of the species. Based on a massive femur, some estimates suggest this T-Rex could have hit 12.5 tons. But more remains are are still needed to accurately measure its size. But yet, despite all that bulk, the Rex was not sluggish. It had great agility. This was thanks due to its wide hips, digit-to-grade leg structure, and low rotational inertia. So perhaps it could move around like a heavyweight ballerina. But how does the Rex compare to its competitor, the Spinosaurus? It's the dinosaur that seems to have a new form every year or so. You know, giving Goku a little rivalry. It went from the Jurassic Park next snapper to our soggy, heron-like dinosaur with a puffy tail that we all know and love today. And that sail? Scientists still aren't 100% sure what it was used for. Theories range from temperature control to mating displays, or maybe even a prehistoric flex to scare away its neighbors. But in a fight, it might have actually been more of a liability. It's built like a billboard that says, hit me. Now listen, it's structurally connected to the spine with something called a vertebral foreman. So while attacking the sail might not be a direct game over, it still would have been very bad. One well-placed hit, could have disrupted the spino's balance, or if severe enough, could cause trauma to the spinal connection, which could potentially lead to paralysis. So flashy, yes, but functional in a fight, not so much. But let's not get it twisted. The Spinosaurus was a top-tier carnivore, and still was an absolute unit. It prowled the swampy waterways of North Africa around 100 to 94 million years ago, so roughly 30 million years before
before the T-Rex ever showed up. And it basically ate whatever fish or small dinosaur that it grabbed. But it did not exactly have a monopoly on its environment like the Rex. It shared its turf with 30 foot super crocodiles known as the Sarcosuchus. And even on the outskirts, it might have clashed with the monstrous Carcharodontosaurus, which was a theropod similar in size and shape to a T-Rex and was just as nasty. So it was definitely battle hardened, no question. But just how big was the Spinosaurus aegypticus? Well, this is where things get interesting. One of the most complete and largest specimens was estimated to be around 8 tons, with a length of 46 feet and a height of 12 feet. So very impressive. But even at that size, it still came up short to its competitor. You see, compared to a fully grown T-Rex like Sewer Scotty, which pushed 9 to 10 tons, the Spino was lighter, lankier, and far less suited for terrestrial combat. Its legs were a lot more short and stubby, and its center of gravity was awkward, so it definitely could not move around as well as the Rex, nor be as swift. And that's saying something, since the Rex not only had a 1.5 to 2 ton weight advantage when fully grown, but also had thicker bones and a simply more robust build. Yeah, never thought I'd see the day where a larger and wider animal would be more agile, but we're here. That said, a Spino was not useless. It did have long functional arms that utterly pushed the T-Rexes to shame. I know it's picking on the T-Rexes in security here, but yeah, the Spino could definitely use them. And the river monster also had a slightly longer skull that measured up to five and a half feet. But that skull was narrow and filled with teeth meant for gripping fish. So it perhaps would be a great sushi chef, but not so much a power lifter. So in a head-to-head -head fight with a brute like the T-Rex, all that flashy packaging starts to look like a bit of a liability. But how about weaponry and fighting experience? After all, build is only half the battle. And the Spino did face off and survived against large predators like the Carcharodontosaurus, which was similar in size to the T-Rex. And the Spino also still had massive functional arms. So is there still hope for it? Maybe. This brings me on to my last point, which is weaponry and fighting IQ. All right, when it comes to pure power and the tools these animals would bring to the battle, yeah, they are both dangerous. After all, they both were top tier predators of their environment. But the way they fight and how their weapons are used, yeah, this is where it gets interesting and the gap really shows. So let's start with the T-Rex. It's the CEO of Bite Force. Now let's point out the obvious here. It's devastating bite. We're talking about one of the strongest bites out of any land animal ever, capable of achieving between 8,000 and 12,000 PSI, which by the the way is 50 to 80 times stronger than what a human can do. Yeah, that would pretty much crush any competitor's hopes and dreams in one bite. And yes, I mean crush, because that's what its jaws were meant to do. It could easily crush any bone in its way, and was actually great at holding onto a limb and maintaining its grip. This was thanks due to the T-Rex's differentiated teeth, and just its skull being simply a very wide build. And not only did the T-Rex have a very robust head, it had wide jaws filled with huge banana sized serrated teeth that were extremely stress resistant. So its bite was essentially like a biological hydraulic press on steroids. And the T-Rex did not just only bite with its grizzly bear sized head, it rammed with it. In fact, due to how stout and strong the T-Rex's neck muscles were, it's implied that the T-Rex actually rammed its head into its opponents in order to off balance or stun them. But here's where things get even more impressive. The T-Rex wasn't just a bite and hope for the best type of fighter. If you remember from earlier, it not only had remarkably good agility for an animal of its size, but also hunted huge, dangerous herbivores that love to charge in and toss around. And this is where the T-Rex's battle IQ and senses really come in handy. Given the T-Rex's great front-facing vision and agility, it knew how to move around in fights well, maintain distance, and see openings. And this is actually further proven by fossil evidence, showing that the T-Rex specifically targeted the frill of the Triceratops to manipulate its movements and stay out of harm's way. This shows the great ability of the Rex to exploit openings and take advantage. Now, how does the Spinosaurus stack up? Well, let's just say it does not. Now, sure, the Spino had a slightly longer skull, but it was a lot more narrow, relatively fragile for an animal of its size, and filled with conical crocodile-like teeth. No serrations, no bone-crunching power, just basically used to grip onto animals like fish or small dinosaurs. And its bite strength? Well, it's estimated to be around 4,000 to 5,000 PSI. 
by. So on par with a modern day saltwater or Nile crocodile. Respectable, sure, but nowhere even in the same league as the T-Rex. Just for reference, the Rex had a bite force that was nearly two to three times stronger than the Spinos. And even worse, that long slender jaw of the Spino lacked serious lateral stress resistance, meaning that a hard enough shake or sideways force when perhaps trying to bite the Rex could snap its teeth like breadsticks. And let's not forget about that exposed neck real quick. It's not doing it any favors against the Rex. It would be a prime target, especially against a predator whose first instinct is to bite hard, ram forward, and who was pretty intelligent. Now perhaps a saving grace that might buy the Spino some time would be its long usable arms with sharp claws at the end. But the way it's actually positioned, in order to deal serious damage, the Spino would have to rear up and swing downwards. That's kind of what it was built for when trying to grip onto aquatic animals and smaller dinosaurs near the water. So translation, if the Spino tried scratching the Rex's head, it would actually be a pretty hard feat to deal any meaningful damage, considering that the arms would basically be scratching upwards, which not only weakens the force, but also makes it dangerously close to the huge skull of the Rex that could fracture it in one bite. But simply, the arms of the Spino really wouldn't have enough leverage to target the vital spots of the Rex without the T-Rex just severely damaging them. Okay, now to give the Spino a little credit here, it did encounter more top tier predators than the Rex, and it likely even faced off against the Carcharodontosaurus, which was similar to the T-Rex in size and body layout. So it might not be really as confused off the start as the T-Rex might be, but I'm really kind of grasping for straws at this point. After all, the Spino did have a lot smaller of a brain that was more primitive, so adapting mid-fight would be a lot harder for it to do. But with all that said, if the answer already isn't obvious in who wins the fight, the T-Rex would pretty handily take the W in my opinion. It just simply has a lot more going for it. It's a lot more robust, has the weight advantage, has a way better skull for actually crushing and delivering damage, it also had better eyesight and senses, and likely a lot more intelligence. And as proven by fossil records, the T-Rex could see and exploit openings. It would definitely try to target the long slender neck of the Spino, perhaps fracture its arms in one bite, and maybe even hit the spine to off balance the Spino. The T-Rex would actually have an agility advantage despite being more robust. So in my opinion, there's really nothing the Spino could actually do to deliver any meaningful damage before the T-Rex outmaneuvers it and cripples the Spino. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment what y'all think, and feel free to check out the rest of my content.